Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to easily make this fun creative title slate using Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. If this design looks familiar to you, it's because it's from my mini series on how to animate archive photos. I'll link those videos in the description below so you can check them out. If you like what you see in today's tutorial, drop a comment or smash that sub button. Now let's get started with making our design. So we're in Photoshop here and we want to start off in Photoshop because we want to make sure that we have a design that we are confident in. So with that being said, we are going to write out our text. I'm using the Dharma Gothic C font type, which is a free Adobe font. If you have an Adobe creative account, you are able to download this entire font family for yourself. I'm going to make this text pretty large. This looks good. Now what I'm going to do is bring in the assets we did from our other tutorial, which I will link above. If you want to know how to mask out players and replace them in the background, I'm going to bring these in here. Zoom out a little bit, and now I'm going to just frame them up where I think they should be. And I'm going to move our font above, and I'm going to actually put my players above my font. And now I'm just seeing, okay, what looks good? Where do I want these guys to line up? This looks good, but now we need to actually get the background in the text. And this is a step I usually wait until After Effects to do, but I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop here. I'm going to take my background layer. I'm going to bring it up and then I'm going to hold down alt and click and then right away it jumps into the text. So that's how you do that. So the last thing we need to do in Photoshop is create our hand drawn circle. And I'm doing that with my Wacom tablet right here. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a new layer, going over to my paintbrush tool and I'm using one of the Kyle dry media brushes. There are tons of these. These are free. This is another perk. If you have a Adobe creative account, you can download all of these brushes. This is just happens to be the one that I'm using. And as you saw in the original, it kind of starts over here and then it goes around and loops out. So I'm just going to take a few attempts of trying to get this right. You're not going to get it right the first time, but that's okay. We're getting closer. And from what I've practiced is like the faster I do this, honestly, the better it looks. This doesn't look too bad and we can always alter the scale of this in After Effects. So I'm cool with it. And so next thing we're gonna do is jump into After Effects and get to animating. So we're in After Effects here and we have all of our assets. Now, one thing I did differently with this project compared to others is that we already did the work. So I took our original render comp from the Parallax tutorial and just rendered that out. And then what I did in addition to that is I rendered out an alpha mat of just the players. And I did this for two reasons. One is I don't want to duplicate work. And secondly, when you have a, something as in labor intensive on your machine as a parallax effect and you pre-comp that, and then you add all of the other effects that we're doing in today's tutorial, it can really slow down your workflow. And so that's why we have these two different rendered out assets here. But we have our part one and our circle. So now what I'm going to do is just line up and see, I'm going to parent my background to my players. We're just going to see where this starts to look good. It zooms in on its own because they are rendered out assets. So now what I'm going to do is alpha mat our background to our part one. So everything fits inside. You can start start to see this magic come to life. It's looking good. Now what I'm going to do is hide our circle stroke for now. And we're going to create a solid for our background. I'm going to be using a pale yellow solid. Here is the hex code if you want to use the same exact one. I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to drop this below. Now what I'm going to do is actually bring in a texture. So now we have this like brownish cement looking wall. And I what I actually did was animate it. So I animated the position, scale, and rotation every second. Really simple stuff. If you want to know how to do this more in depth, I will link another tutorial to that where I animate a handful of different textures. But this is the overall concept here. Go back in my working folder. I'm going to bring our texture in. So now that our texture's in here, we need to loop it out. So I'm going to go to right click, time, enable time remapping. Now, this is a very important tip. So when I go to the very end here, nothing shows. So I need to go up one frame, set a keyframe, and then delete this last one. After that, I'm going to hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, and type in an expression, loop out. Now, this is going to loop out the entire time and it looks really good. What about our pale yellow solid? So what we're gonna do is actually change the blend mode here to hard light. That way we could see a little bit of our texture in the background on top of our pale yellow solid background. So 
Now you're starting to see this come to life a little bit more, which is looking awesome. Next thing we're gonna do is actually start animating our assets and text into the frame. So I'm gonna go to the 12 frame mark here, set a keyframe for, for position, go up to 112, set another keyframe. We're gonna go back to the starting keyframe and we're gonna just bring this down. I'm gonna highlight both of these keyframes, go to flow, which is a paid plugin, but I absolutely love it. It just saves me a lot of time. Apply this preset here, and now things are starting to look good. But what we're gonna do is actually split the uh, the layer with Alt in bracket, and that way it kind of comes up a little bit more, um, a little bit faster, looks cooler. And we're gonna add a posterized time effect to make it look a little bit more choppy. Now this is looking good. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the players. So I'm gonna actually start this animation with the players at the 18 frame mark and go up to 118. Go back. Replicate the process with flow. And now what we actually need to do is cut this in half just like we did our other ones. So All right, this is looking good, but we're actually gonna do something a little bit differently with these two layers that we didn't do with our text. So I'm gonna split them with Control Shift D. I'm gonna to go to the position keyframe and I'm going to, I'm gonna press Alt, click the stopwatch and put in an expression. So we'll do posterize times six. And we will do wiggle two, 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 comma three. So with having it this way, there's just that little bit of anticipation at the start, which looks really nice. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create our triangle. So I'm gonna go up to our shape tool here and create a star, go to our poly star, go to our poly star path and change our points from five to three. The next thing we need to do is actually center up our anchor point that's here into our actual layer itself. So I'll go to layer, transform, center anchor point and layer content, rotate this 90 degrees. We also need to shrink this down a little bit. So I'll drop the scale. And then we are going to align this, bring it in here. Awesome. Now what I want to do is actually add a fractal noise. So I'm going to add a fractal noise here. We're going to change this to dynamic and this to spline. And then for our evolution, I'm going to hold down alt, click on the stopwatch and put in time asterisk 200. And that way we have kind of like this wavy looking texture in the actual composition itself. Yeah, I can map this to the background, but I want this to look a little bit different, but still similar to the overall black and white design. So that's why I'm using the fractal noise in this way. I'll label this triangle. Now what we're gonna do is actually start our animation for the triangle. We'll start it at around 118. We'll go up to, we'll go back to 18 frames, go back, go up, we'll go up a few. Set another keyframe, and then go up a full second here to three seconds, and put in our original keyframe. So basically, here is what we're doing with the actual triangle. We're bringing it in, bringing it out. Really simple stuff. Uh, I have some expressions. It's the expressions we used earlier, uh, the looping on expressions and the posterize and wiggle expressions. I'm just gonna alt click, paste these in here. So it's posterize time six, wiggle two, 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 comma two, and loop out. And we are going to ease these keyframes as well. Now what I wanna do is actually add an echo effect to this uh, triangle here. So I'm gonna type in our echo effect. I'm going to put, I'm gonna change these values here to 0033, change the number of echoes to 100, and composite in back. And that's how we get it to look skippy like this. And I might actually bring down the scale of this, bring it like right there. I'm actually gonna bring out these arrows, bring them out a little bit further. Bring these out, 
bring them out a little bit back. And we'll start our animation right here at the 118 mark. So here's what we have so far. And notice everything has the same theme going where we're already animating something, but the layer is actually split. So by the time we actually see it, it is already in motion. This is looking pretty good so far, but the next thing we need to do is actually animate our stroke circle line. So I'm just gonna select this on and I'm seeing how this looks in relation to everything else. I'm going to bring up the scale. I'm gonna break this chain here so we can animate either the X or the Y have more uh, customization with it when we do it this way and I'm bringing this up here seeing what looks good all right and I know I want to start animating it this right around I'll say like the two second mark so what I'm gonna do is pre comp this I'll call the stroke circle pre we have all attributes into the new composition so now what we're gonna do is actually create a mat for our line to reveal it so I'm gonna use my pen tool here, bring up the stroke. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm gonna start drawing this line all around. I'll bring it up even more. Cool. Now what we need to do is actually add a rough and edges effect and you'll see why we're adding this in a minute. So we're gonna go to roughen, we'll change the border to 33, and then we will change the scale to 10. Pick a different color, just so you can kind of see what we're, what we're doing here. So basically, when we animate this on, you know, without the roughen edges, it's just a very hard line, but with the roughen edges, it just makes it look more like it was drawn on with like a marker or something like that. So that's what we're doing with this effect here. Um, and that's why we're adding it on. So now what we're going to do is actually animate this. And we talked about starting this at the two second mark. So I'm going to go to add trim paths, go to zero. And then go up one second to three seconds in apply flow. So here's what we have. All right, it's coming to life a little bit. Now we want it to still have that choppy look like everything else has. So we're gonna add a posterized time. And we will change this to six. So that way when this animates on, it looks a lot like that. Now let's see our line here. What we're gonna do is alpha mat our stroke circle to our stroke mat. Like this. And there you go. Now we have this hand-drawn line. We'll jump back into our working folder. And here's what we have. And this is looking really smooth right now. I'm really liking the way this looks, but uh, what we saw in the original is that we actually had a little bit of depth. We had the line in front of some letters and behind some letters, and that was completely faked. And I'm about to show you guys how this is done. So with our pre-comp here, what I'm gonna actually do is start masking out parts of the pre-comp so uh, we can fake this depth. So I'm gonna just go here. And make a mask. And I'm gonna click M, subtract. We'll do the same thing with the A. Subtract it. All right, this looks good. I need to do some more though. I'm gonna go down to this R here. We'll do the same thing. Subtract that. You'll see how this works. Okay, good. Nice. 
And like you can get crazy with this. You can go in and out of letters like the letter P here or around the one, but I just wanna keep it simple and show you guys a few examples of how you can create fake depth with uh, with the circle stroke here. I love how this is looking and I love the design and how this is animating in. Now we need to figure out a way how to animate this out. So I'm gonna show you guys some cool shortcuts here. So we're gonna start our animation out at about the four and a half second mark. And what I'm gonna do with our text here is I'm actually gonna add an animator. So I'm gonna go to animate, we're gonna add tracking. And what tracking does is it adds kerning between the each letter. So I set a keyframe there and I'm gonna go to, let's say one second up. We will expand this out here. I'm gonna highlight these keyframes, go to flow, apply that here, sweet. Now it looks a little weird since we do have the mass out circle, but we're gonna fake this a little bit. So we're gonna click on scale. I'm gonna unclick the actual uh, the chain so we can just scale out uh, one axis at a time. And I'm gonna scale out the X with it. We'll do the same thing. Apply flow. So this is looking really good so far. Now what we need to do for our final step is actually animate this entire slate in and out. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I created this paper transition in Photoshop Creating your own transitions is basically a tutorial in itself. So if you wanna know how to make something like this, leave a comment and I might just do it. But here's what the transition looks like. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna freeze the last frame here. That way we have information to refer to. Nice. Okay, and what I'm actually gonna do is bring both of these in at about six frames. So now what I'm gonna do is actually alpha mat our working composition to our transition. And here's how it looks, it looks pretty slick. Now what we're gonna do is actually go to our uh, working comp, take the text, control C, go back into our render folder, paste it in here. I'm gonna delete all of our effects, our tracking and our position. I'm just gonna have the text on its own. I'll show it so we can see it. We're gonna change the color to yellow. Better bring this to the bottom. And then I'm going to duplicate our transition here. I'm gonna bring this up, bring this to the very bottom. I'm gonna put this to the very front. And then I'm going to alpha mat our text to our other transition. So that way we actually see the reveal happen before it happens. So now we need to animate things out, which we started at the four and a half second mark. So I'm going to click Control Shift D. I'm gonna bring our transition, a new transition in. We're gonna Bring it back here, and we're actually going to reverse this. Time, time reverse layer. So now, everything's gonna be collapsing in. And the reason we split our working clip is because that's already alpha matted to how it's animating in. So we needed to split it to create a new clip to animate everything out. So, when I come back here, I'm going to alpha mat our new working clip to our reverse transition. And of course, we want to make sure these clips aren't there anymore either. So now we have things animating on, the hand-drawn circle, and then it's hiding. It's really simple. And I'm gonna show you guys one last tip because it's super important when you render out assets like this. So to render this out correctly, I need to go to composition, add to render queue. So within our render queue, I actually need to change this from an H.264 to QuickTime RGB plus alpha. And if you're not seeing the plus alpha or if that's grayed out, go to your format options here and make sure that you have an option like Apple ProRes 4444 that will allow an alpha channel. So by rendering it out that way, you actually can overlap it onto video footage. It's as simple as that. That's how you create and animate a fun animated slate. Let me know what you think in the comments about today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.